It is my pleasure and privilege to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Edward Xu, Assistant Director of Chinese Studies, Adjunct Professor in Educational Ministries and Leadership. Dr. Xu has served as Missionary Director of CEF, that is Child Evangelism Fellowship, San Gabriel Valley Region, in mobilizing good news clubs in public schools and training Sunday school teachers at local churches since 1999. He also has served on pastoral teams in Chinese local churches in Southern California. His major duties at DTS are building online or hybrid courses in our Chinese studies program. His passion is to teach children, train teachers, and equip leaders so that they are able to teach the truth, preach the gospel, and make disciples for the Lord. Amen for that. Would you please join me in welcoming our friend, Dr. Ed Shu today. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. <laughs> Some of you guys. Yes, it is Chinese New Year today. And, you know, we as Chinese, we celebrate this Chinese New Year uh, by so many activities today. Actually, it's the longest holiday from today until 15 days later. It's a Lenten festival. It's the longest holiday in Chinese calendar. And you will see all the lion dance, dragon dance, all the loud sounds and on the street and in houses. And that's what we're waiting for the whole year because this is the most exciting day that we have. And we are prepared for this day the whole year. And you can see f families, relatives, members of our friends and the community. We just visit one another and greeting one another, saying, congratulations, the New Year is here. And it's a long story about why we have New Year in this customs, but we greet one another with good fortune, good health, especially in this pandemic situation. You know, it's great to say, hey, you are still huh, healthy. Congratulations, okay. And we also give a red envelope to greet each other. And you know, last night actually was the um, New Year Eve. Usually, family members will gather together and have a big meal around the big table. If you look at this photo, it's about 14, 15 of them together and around the big table. And it's so exciting and so warm to have meal together as a family. And after the New Year meal, we, you know what happened? We, we just have, as children, we will stay up with our parents and to welcome the arrival of the New Year. And why we as children have to stay up? Don't you have homework to do? No, as our customer, we have to stay with our parents uh, through the whole night and to welcome the New Year. Why? Because we believe that children stayed up with parents for the New Year Eve. It's a blessing to the parents for them to have a New Year prosperity and long life. And also parents show their love to their children as well. So we'll give the red envelope to our children and bless them. That's the way we show our love. You know, parents, do you have the love for their children? And also the children have the love for the parents. You can tell all the activities through the New Year Festival. We celebrate the New Year's and also in many activities we show our love to our loved one. In Chinese, if you look at these characters, don't mean to teach you Chinese, if you want to learn, you're welcome to do so. And you see these five terms, Actually, they are representing five different loves in Chinese. And we usually have the top one as a noun, as an adjective to describe the love as the whole thing. For example, you have fatherly love, motherly love, you have friendly love, you have romantic love, mm. and also you have equal love. So all kinds of love, and all these love are good. But let me ask you, 
which one is the true and perfect love in this world, eternally. The definition of true love we are looking for, the best resources that we have, is the Bible. It's the Word of God. So we're going to learn from the Word of God to find out what is true love is. And as Chinese Christian, I want to bless you with this red envelope as well. And it's my heart for you. And there's a treasure within this envelope. So shall we open it and read it together? It's from the Word of God, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Are you ready to read? Yes. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. That's what the Bible defines love in this verse. And Paul gives us a, a simple definition. Love is patient and love is kind. To understand the context of this verse, you know, I think it's good that we go through the outline of 1 Corinthians and we see how Paul, in terms of logical thinking in his mind. In chapter 12, Paul outlines the, some basic concept of spiritual gifts. And in chapter 14, you can tell that Paul was giving some important guidelines for Christians to practice spiritual gifts. However, in chapter 13, you can tell Paul highlights the superiority of love and focuses on what love is in chapter 13. And the end of chapter 13, Paul wraps up this section by exhorting love as the most important virtue of Christian life. It's not about the Christian spiritual gifts and how to use them or anything else, but love, what love is. In this section in verse 13, let me read it to you. It's, it's the conclusion of of Paul and his thinking what love is. In verse 13, Paul says that three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Why would Paul place his teaching of true love between chapter 12 and chapter 14? I think it's very important we need to think and we need to look into it. And Dr. Constable explains why Paul taught about the true love in chapter 13. I quote, Paul now proceed, proceeded to elaborate on the fact that love surpasses mo the most important spiritual gifts. Some of the Corinthian Christians may not have possessed any of the gifts mentioned in the previous three lists in chapter 12. But all of them could practice love. Clearly, all of them needed to practice love more fully. So, first of all, we're going to learn about true love and how can we practice, apply the true love in our daily life. It's very important for us to learn. And we're going to learn, examine the meaning of the true love is. In verse 4, if you look at here, Paul defined true love by making a contrast between what true love is and what true love is not. If, you look, if we look at the table, on my right column, you always want to be right, right? My right column is what true love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. And these two are rooted in humility. Love is patient. And love 
as kind. On my left hand column is what true love is not. Love is not proud. Love is not envious. And love is not boastful. And they are all rooted in pride. Remember that in James 4 6, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So in the first part of verse 4, Paul gives the definition of true love. It, as a definition of true love is patience. Love is patient, or love endures long suffering. And Dr. Laurie, in his commentary, he gave the connection between love and patience. I quote, Patience is the capacity to be wrong and not to retaliate. The Corinthian church had many members who had been wronged, such as in lawsuits and the poor at communal meals. The response of love to these wrongs would be a display of kindness and goodness. Envy and boasting seem to be abound as two parts of the same problem, such as divisions and gifts. The Corinthians have no monopoly on pride, though they seem to. Since, and I'll quote, since patience through long suffering will help cut down our pride and also cultivate our love. So we need to learn what love is. Love, a true love is a long suffering. And how can long suffering help us to cultivate our true love within our life? True love suffers long enough to love. True love suffers long enough to love. In his 41 years working as a missionary in India, William Carey experienced loneliness, grief, and regret. He himself contracted malaria, and his young son died of dysentery. And his wife was suffering from severe mental issues. And all these issues piled up together tremendously strain in their marriage, ministry, and life. So how William Carey went through this long sufferings? William Carey was still, still able to have hope and trust in God and rejoice through his long sufferings. He wrote, as I quote, this is indeed the valley of the shadow of death to me. But I rejoice that I'm here, now stand, notwithstanding. And God is here, and of course. William Carey persevered and went on to help reform India's social issues and started a theological and liberal art college. And most importantly, he translated the Bible into major Indian languages. What a testimony of long suffering and true love of God's people in their life, such as William Carey. For him, true love was found in Christ and shown through a lifetime long sufferings for 41 years. But I want to ask you why. Why does God train Christians to learn and to practice true love through their long sufferings? Paul also provided the answer in verse 4 as well. Love does not envy. It does not boast and is not proud. You know, with a prideful spirit, you wouldn't have a right attitude to others. And this photo, and Dr. Hillman can be my witness too, he's there. 
This photo reminds me about an incident we had last March. And our luggage were lost, both of them. That's all we have for two weeks at least trip in Israel. And our luggage, both of our luggage were lost on the way to Tel Aviv in Israel. And we were waiting and looking, and my wife Tiffany kept asking me, where are our luggage? I said, I don't know. So we would keep looking. Everyone in this photo who lost his or her luggage, and everyone got a hygiene package from the Israel airline, you can tell. And unfortunately, I was the only person who did not have one. Oh, I was so anxious to have one, you know. And it's a long line. Uh, when I bring one back to my wife, and my wife said, how come I don't have it? Oh, okay, this is yours. And I don't have it then. So I was so anxious. And in my heart, let's talk about my head first. In my head, I was telling myself, oh, they are busy with their customers. Just be patient, okay, kid? But in my heart, pride and anger and resentment it just bursting with my heart. And I was almost tempted to yell at the manager, you tell me why I can have one. You don't like me or what? I deserve one. By the way, let me tell you, if I am the manager, I can be better than you are. I can do better in you in management. See, it's getting personal. Don't even mention about some other issues that we think it's running with my heart. But listen, we need to keep this in our, in our mind. We always have this tent that we want to be superior in terms of getting even. In his book, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis described such a pride as the greatest sin, I quote. Each person's pride is in competition with everyone else's pride. If everyone else became equally rich or clever or good looking, there wouldn't be nothing, there would be nothing to be proud about. It is the competition, it is the comparison that makes you proud. The pleasure of being above the rest. Once the element of competition has gone, pride has gone. That is why I said pride is essentially competitive in a way the other vices are not. End of quote. I don't know about you, my friends, but I truly admit that. Pride is really the biggest sin in my life. Remember the scripture says about pride and Proverbs? Pride goes before destruction and heartiness before a fall. Paul tells us his experience with suffering Related with pride in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I quote, Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me, and to keep me from becoming proud, end of quote. God teaches us to humble through long sufferings. And God also shows us love through others' mercy and grace and kindness in our sufferings. Especially in this pandemic situation, we see so many people are in need situation. My brothers and sisters, 
Do you know how many people are in the quote unquote food insecurity in the United States, which is the richest country in the world? As 25% of the population who are facing the insecurity in terms of food insecurity. In January 2014, my wife Tiffany was diagnosed with breast cancer. And the most difficult time she had, that she had to went through undergoing chemotherapy and radiation. After his surgery, for three months, there were so many wonderful and kind Christians. They organized a quote-unquote meal train schedule. And they cook, and they had to drive 45 minutes from different cities to our house at Prosper. Something might surprise you. Most of them we have never met before. Amen. They cooked food. And also they drove so, so far from their house. And it was a humbling experience to have all these wonderful Christians show God's love by serving us. We have to keep this in mind. To me, it's very difficult to accept their love at the very beginning. I feel embarrassed. Even though I don't cook, I only have the gift of eating. I don't have the gift of cooking. And I'll only cook as Yuli. It's so sick. She cannot even smell the smoke at all in the kitchen. But these wonderful and kind Christians, they cook and drove more than 45 minutes to our house and had another trip of 45 minutes back home. This is love that we could see in suffering situation. So to understand a fully love, a true love, you need to humbly accept it and experience it. You can be taught all about what love is and what it looks like. But I want to tell you, the true realization of love cannot happen until you own the experiences of love. One more time. The true realization of true love cannot happen until you own the experiences of true love. After you experience love, the true love, you are able to practice God's love by giving others mercy and grace through your actions. However, while you are serving, you must give up again your pride, which is painful to do so. But through long sufferings, you will be able to build a character of true love, as Paul indicates in Romans 5, I quote. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing the suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. That's the love. That's the true love we learn eventually. And now we come to the point, the question, how can we learn and practice true love in our daily lives? First of all, you need to resist your pride by serving others humbly. And this is true and very true in my life. You need to resist your pride by serving others humbly. There are Christians like Mother Teresa, Amy Carmichael, who demonstrated their love by humbling themselves and serving those in the pit of poverty. 
They follow Christ's examples so closely as Paul instructed in Philippians. Do not be selfish. Do not try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Do not look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. And you know what? It's interesting that this passage of serving others humbly is followed by the passage of kenosis. It's in Paul's intention to teach us that the primary step to selfless service is to deny thyself like Christ did. To Jesus, the, cre- the cross is the crescendo of his suffering on this earth. But Christ endured it with joy. I believe the best way, again, to deal my pride is to serve others out of true love, humbly. I believe all the faculty and staff at DTS have the same attitude toward teaching the truth and loving well. When I was a student, I was so anxious about being part of project, quote unquote, team projects. It's always been difficult for me to work with those students they are struggling, who are struggling with deadlines. It would be so easy for me to lose my patience. And however, I want to admit that I was actually the most vulnerable and the weakest link of the team when I lost my patience. Even now, I'm learning how to practice patience with my students. And each semester, I have to help students, those students who are new to online education. They don't have e-learning experiences, online experiences prior, their, prior to their study at DTS. Don't even mention about language barrier can be another issue for their study at DTS. But it's always a great learning and spiritual growth experiences for me. There have been sometimes, I would say most of the time, that I almost, I almost lost my patience and, ten, and temper. But through these many years of serving provided by the door, you know what? I realized that love is the real key to endure the long suffering through our life. Like everyone else, I have my weaknesses. And my biggest one, guess what? Is my belief that I am perfect. I'm still learning what true love is in many areas. So my family, my colleagues, my neighbors, Even my students, they have to be patient with me when I was and will be in vulnerable situations. Remember what Dr. Lowry says? Patience is the capacity to be wrong and not retaliate. Patience is the capacity. So it's a capacity and the patient is the definition of love. So I want to calculate what is the capacity of light. Let's say, this morning, I realized that, I calculated, okay? I realized that I overspent for Christmas and it's 20% of my capacity gone because I didn't, I didn't spend it as my family spent it. And I'm the one suffering <laughs> and paying it. So it's 20% of your capacity. And I realized that the weather is kind of tricky. I saw snow a little freaky 
on the way to DTS. So it's another 20% because the traffic situation is making me nervous and I don't like to have accidents, right? And the other percent in terms of preaching at DTS Chapel, it takes me 35%. <laughs> because English is my third language to preach. So we calculated. And I found that I overcommitted my ministry. And tomorrow I have to do another stuff. Sunday I have to preach. And I have to preach every Sunday in the, Feb in the month of February. That's another 20%. So how many percent I have left? I all totally use up 95% of my capacity this morning. And lo and behold, one car cutting my line. That's count, make it spiritual, okay? Somebody cutting your line, that's make 2% only. So you got first car coming in, okay? So how many percent? 2%. So total is 97%. And lo and behold, somebody in front of you, stop without telling you, hey, I'm stopping, okay? Now, actually, you are daydreaming about your sermon. So let's make it spiritual. 2% of this capacity. So how many percent you got right now? 99. And lo and behold, you have 1% left. Patience is the capacity. So, we need to learn what shall we do when we are in vulnerable situation. And this is very important, we need to keep this in mind. When we're in a vulnerable situation, it's not by ourselves. I want to remind you and remind myself. Okay, we need to rely on, we need to rely, and the PowerPoint is one point, so you got 100% done. Sorry, I, I don't get used to this thing. Okay. So we need to rely on power, his power, not our own power. His power of restoration for restoration. So when going through suffering situations, you feel helpless and hopeless. Most likely, you are overwhelmed up to a certain level, you'll be broken. But let me remind you, as I quote A.W. Tozer, it is doubtful whether God can bless a man greatly until he has hurt him deeply, end of quote. A couple of weeks ago, and we had a cultural engaged chapel, and we learned about the power of resurrection and restoration, and the turn Kintsuki stood out to me. You can look at the picture. And it's, it cost me $12 to have this photo, okay? <laughs> Kintsuki is the process of not just repairing broken pottery. It is also restoring beautifully by filling the cracks with gold. In the same way, God redeemed us with his son and restored us with his spirit. Yes, we are broken through all these sufferings. But I want to tell you, with God's love, He restored us with His power of resurrection. Aren't you excited? Aren't you so grateful for this? The gold river that fills in all the cracks is the beautiful image of God's redemption for our restoration. And Dr. Elizabeth Hall, we had the the lecture we had last week has done so many research on suffering from a perspective of biblical counseling. And Dr. Hall gives us the insight of enduring through sufferings with the power of resurrection, as I quote. The solution to suffering cannot be found inside of ourselves, but it is found in God's loving provision of redemption through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus is the Savior. 
who can sympathize with suffering because of his own suffering. And he is the model for how to suffer. Through following Jesus' example, suffering itself can be redeemed and transformed as God uses it to accomplish God's purpose in our life and of course. As new man and new woman in Christ, with the power of resurrection from the Holy Spirit, we are renewed and restored with a new character in Christ. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. And all this start with love. So we learn what true love is and how can we cultivate true love through sufferings. Remember, true love suffers long enough to love. And this year is the year of oxen in Chinese tradition. And oxen are the most important and productive animals in Chinese agriculture. But you know what? They're always humbly, quietly, and persistently serve their masters. There was a conversation between a, a wine, swine and, and, and an ox. The swine was whining to the ox, and it's not fair. Why does our master favor you so much than me? Look, his daughter was even so close to you. And you know what? She doesn't even look at me. And so the ox replied, Well, I'm useful. I live to serve, and I die serving others as a feast. But you live to eat and only die to be eaten. My brothers and sisters, let's be useful and learn to serve others in this difficult time. Wallowing in self-pity and anger and resentment will not serve you well through your sufferings. Let's learn what true love is through sufferings in our lives and practice our life in terms of giving others mercy, grace, and kindness. So we are able to teach the truth and love well. On the other side of this bookmark, if you look at it, it says, with God's grace, I will demonstrate true love by serving someone. So I would encourage you to do so with God's help. I want you to pray about it and have someone's name on top of the first line and put his name or her name on it and pray about it. How can you, through your grace that you receive from the Lord, to show your kindness to this person by maybe forgiving him or her or sharing gospel with this person. Maybe she's in the need of the gospel. Thirdly, maybe you, you can help him or help her in something. Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful for the truth that you are love. You love us so much that you send your son to die for us. And we are so grateful that your son, Jesus, show the example of love through his death and through his resurrection. Thank you for helping us through the suffering in our lives with the power of resurrection, with the guidance, with the comforting power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We thank you for helping us to learn what true love is and with your grace that we are able to practice what true love is in our life by giving us strength and grace 
and we are able to help others in different matters in their suffering situation. Father, we thank you for giving us such a wonderful lesson, the true love in our life. I pray that you'll help us to be a beneficial to others and give all the glory to you through our life testimony. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.